Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome back to J. Crew. Yes, this is J. Crew and another beautiful day that God has blessed us with to come together and to study another portion of his word. Boys and girls, I pray that you have had a blessed good week and that you are having a good weekend. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, um, as we prepare our hearts to go into the word of God, I pray that your heart is ready to receive the seed from the word, boys and girls, so that it will produce roots and bear much fruit. And boys and girls, um, I want you to examine yourself, examine your heart as to whether or not you are striving to do your very best to stay on the straight and narrow path. That is the path that leads to eternal life. And that is what God desires for each of us to have, boys and girls. The Bible says that broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many find it. They find it in social media. They find it on the Internet. They find it in disobedience at home. They found it in disruptions at school, all kinds of ways, boys and girls, in which the path is broad. And we don't want to be on that path. We want to be on the path of righteousness. And that path of righteousness is doing the right things, even when we don't feel like it. Amen. Amen. And the word of God, boys and girls, is helps us as we listen to the word of God, allowing it into our hearts. And as it produces roots, we um, go out and practice what we learn so that we can see the power of doing God's will. Amen. Amen. And I pray that that's what you were prepared to do today. Amen. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer and we'll take it from there. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for your word, dear Lord, as we get ready to hear your word, dear Lord. I pray that something will be said that will inspire the hearts and the minds of these children, that they will have that desire to want to know you more personally. Bless them in a mighty way, dear Lord. May your word work through their lives. May they apply your word, dear Lord, to every aspect of their lives, at home, at school, um, in the community, even in the church, dear Lord, so that they can actually experience your goodness and your grace and your love. Lord, we love you. We adore you. Continue to just navigate us through this dark world that we are living in so that when we see you face to face, we will not be ashamed, but we will Hear your voice say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Bless these young people, dear Lord. So many distractions, so many things that are out there that are pulling them away from what is right and what is true. And they are just diving into other things, dear Lord, and, um, and just dragging their souls through the filth of this dark world. And Lord, um, they can't find their way out, but you are the light of the world. And I pray, Father, that they will see that light and that they will step towards that light and join in with you, dear Lord, and just walk in the way that you desire for them to walk and leave the consequences to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So boys and girls, we're going to pause for a moment and then go right into the word. Amen? Amen. Okay, boys and girls, now we can ready to go into the word for today. Today's word is going to be coming from Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. We're going to be talking about missions, boys and girls. Yes, we're going to be talking about missions, given a mission, and then the role of the leadership of the overseers of the missions to enable us to actually finish the missions. Amen? Amen. Yes, we're going to be talking about missions today, not missionary journeys, not going on mission trips, but what are missions? Basically, boys and girls, the mission is, mission is a task with which a group or individual is charged. It's a task, boys and girls, that is given to a group or an individual that they are charged to finish. That is what a mission is, boys and girls. And then there's also the leader who oversees the mission, who ensures that there's no obstacles. That means there's nothing that stops them or stand in the way of the assignee or the person who's going to be doing the mission so that they will successfully complete the mission. That is what it's all about, boys and girls. It's about receiving a task and achieving that task. And the leaders are um, there about removing all of those impediments, all of those obstacles to ensure that the mission is completed. Let's use an example. For example, let's say your school teacher, if you and your group an assignment to clean up after a gathering. In other words, there was a gathering at the school or whatnot. And now there's the cleanup time. So what the leader does or the overseer of the mission, what they do is they ensure that you have access to the room or the location of the event and have all of the tools necessary to what? To clean up. So that is the role of the leader. When, but your mission is to what? 
is to clean up. Let's say your mission is to rake the leaves. So whoever it is that invited you to rake the leaves, let's say it's your parents who asked you to help to rake the leaves. What your parents are going to do is to ensure that you have the tools, a rake, for example, to help to complete the task. So the, your mission is the rake. And so what the overseer of the, of the mission, their role is to ensure that you have the necessary tools so that you can complete the mission. Let's say it's your mission, boys and girls, to read scripture. You are going to be reading scripture during devotion at um, one of the main um, church services. And so what it is, the worship leader, what they do is they ensure that you find the scripture and make sure that you and help you with anything that you may have um, as far as overcoming certain words or whatnot so that you are ready when you are, your time has come for you to stand before the church and to read. In other words, you have the leader. The leader's role is to ensure that you have everything that you need to complete the mission. And if there is anything that gets in the way, it, the leader removed those things out of the way so that you are successful. Amen? Amen. So, boys and girls, when you are given a mission, you have leaders who play a vital role in the success of the missions. You are not out there doing something on your own, but you have someone who backs you up so that you can successfully achieve your mission. And what is a mission? It could be a very simple task. Like, for example, let's say your parents they're, they're the overseers, and they want you to wash the dishes. Boys and girls, there are things that you will need to actually wash the dishes, right? You are going to need dish detergent. You're going to need dish towels. You're going to need water and all those things to wash the dishes. Amen? Amen. And so what the, the overseer, your parents' role is, is to ensure that you have the detergent, that you have the towels, and that the water is ready so that you can do what? Successfully wash the Wash the dishes. So you got the missions that are given, and then you have the overseers who actually ensure that the missions are successful by removing anything that could that could possibly stop you from achieving your mission. Well, what does that have to do with the, the Bible and what we're going to be talking about today? Well, boys and girls, you have the apostles. The apostles were given a mission, and that was their, their mission was to take the gospel all over the world. Take the gospel all over the world. And so what God, who is the overseer of this mission, what his role is, is to remove anything that could potentially stop the gospel from going all over the world. So we have this story today about the apostle Peter. Now, the apostle Peter, he was one of the lead apostles who was commissioned or given the mission to take the gospel all over the world. However. There was an obstacle or something got in the way. And so if something gets in the way, whose role is it to remove that from um, getting in the way so that Peter can complete his mission? The role is God because God is the overseer of the mission so that the gospel can go all over the world. So he has to what? Step in, remove the obstacle so that the mission can be completed. Let me give you a little background before we watch this um, video that tells the rest of the story. Well, there was this mean king. His name was King Herod. King Herod, the, um, King Herod, what he um, did, boys and girls, is that he killed one of the apostles, Apostle James. <clears throat> and he saw that all of the Jews who hated the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they were happy and they were rejoicing. So King Herod said, you know what? Boy, they are really happy about this um, killing of, um, of um, James. I tell you what, I'm going to go get the head man. I'm going to go get Peter. And we are going to really get, a, um, get some um, approval from the, uh, from the Jews by killing Peter. So he went and he, he got Peter and boys and girls and put Peter in the prison. And he put him in the prison, boys and girls, because it was um, a certain festival going on. So they were going to wait till the next day to chop his head off. Mm, mm, mm. So boys and girls, King Herod got in the way of God fulfilling his mission. So let's see what happened. And then we will come back and share the rest of the story. Amen. Amen. After Jesus had been taken up into heaven, mean King Herod began doing terrible things to the followers of Jesus. He even had some of them killed. Some Jewish people were happy that Herod was doing this. 
because they didn't believe in Jesus or like his followers. So to please the people, Herod decided to throw Peter in jail too. The king ordered 16 soldiers to guard him over the Passover holiday. But while Peter sat in jail, God's people gathered in their homes to pray for him. That night, an angel came into the jail cell and woke Peter up. Hurry, get up. Peter's chains fell off, but the soldiers kept sleeping. Follow me. Peter thought he must be dreaming, but he followed the angel right past all the guards. When they came to the iron gate of the prison, it swung open on its own. But after they had walked a few steps into the city, the angel disappeared. So Peter went to the house of some friends who lived nearby and knocked on the door. A servant girl went to the door and asked who was there. Who is it? It's Peter. The Lord sent his angel to rescue me from Herod. The girl recognized Peter's voice and quickly ran to tell the group. Peter is at the door. Hello? But the friends didn't believe the girl and went back to praying for Peter. They didn't realize that their prayers had already been answered. They finally listened to the girl and went to open the door. And that's how God saved Peter from the mean King Herod. And an angel came to me. He freed me from my chains, and he let me out the door. Okay, so boys and girls, what did we just see? We saw that the task that was given was for Peter to what? Take the gospel all across the world. However, boys and girls, there was this king who was determined to kill Peter. But guess what happened? The overseer of the mission, who is God, he stepped in, sent an angel, and rescued Peter, and Peter was able to go forth. In other words, boys and girls, if God did it for Peter, he would do the same for us. If we've been given an assignment, and we have been given an assignment, we're going to speak about it later, and God is ready, willing, and able to help us so that we can fulfill our assignment just like Peter appeal fulfilled his. Amen? Amen. Boys and girls, see, the enemy thought that he could stop Peter from preaching by arresting him and planning to kill him. But God had other plans. And because God had other plans and he rescued Peter, guess what the Bible says in Acts chapter 12 and verse number 24 is that the word continued to spread and flourish. The word continued to spread and flourish. In other words, boys and girls, the king thought that he was able to do certain things and um, he had the power to do it. And the Jews were satisfied and happy with what the king was planning to do. But God stepped in because God has give, had given the apostles a mission. And Peter was one of the ring leaders of the apostles. And so being one of the leaders, boys and girls, it was his responsibility to help in leading and sharing the gospel all over the world. And he could not do it in prison, nor could he do it if he was dead. So God stepped in. So what am I saying? Here's what I'm saying. This is applicable to us, boys and girls. We are charged with a mission as well. Yes, we are charged with a mission. That means that we are given a task, and our task, boys and girls, is to share the gospel with others and to make disciples. To share the gospel with others and to make disciples. What does it mean to share the gospel? 
that what it means, boys and girls, to share the gospel is to tell other people about Jesus Christ and how Jesus loves them and how Jesus desires for them to become a part of his family. What does it mean to make disciples? By our lifestyle and by just the studying of the word of God and finding out what how we are to um how we are to carry ourselves in the household of God. That is what makes disciples, boys and girls, obeying the word of God. And how do we help others to become disciples? We can do it by inviting them to Bible study. We can do it by letting our light so shine that people, they can, they can see what we do and how we act. And like Paul said, follow um, our example as we follow the example of Jesus Christ. There are many ways in which we can do it, boys and girls, but we have been given a mission. Yes, and so therefore, boys and girls, we have no excuse. And we have no excuse because God has removed all of the obstacles and is ready to remove any other obstacles so that we can take the gospel all over the world. So what do we need to do? Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. We come up with so many excuses as to why we don't share the gospel with other individuals. And many individuals leave this world young and old because we are not doing our part. We're not doing our part in sharing and we're not doing our part in making disciples. Boys and girls, we have a great responsibility of being a part of the family of God. And being a part of the family of God is not for us to go and live however we want to live and wait for Jesus to come so that we can be caught up into the kingdom of heaven. No, God has given us ex expectations and we are to go forth, boys and girls, sharing the gospel and making disciples. And we can do it. And if there's anything that gets in the way, just as God stepped in and removed the problem that Peter was having, he will step in and remove any problems that we may have. Amen? Amen. So boys and girls, here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to make a list of every reason why you are not furthering the gospel. You are not sharing the gospel, nor are you living out the gospel. And ask God to help you to overcome. And God will do it. But most importantly, boys and girls, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. You are on a mission and God has high expectations for you. So boys and girls, there's a story in the Bible about this um, king who gave, um, they gave um, three servants amount of money or gold based upon their abilities and expected them to go forth and double that or do something with it and, and bring back, um, what is it, fruit from that um, gold in which they received. In other words, he wanted them to go out and make more money with the money in which they received. And so the one that had the five talents of, of gold, the, he went out and used the abilities in which God had blessed him with, and he created five additional talents of gold. The one that had two talents of gold, he used the abilities in which God had blessed him with, and he went out and he achieved two additional talents of gold. And the one that had the one talent, boys and girls, all of them were on a mission. All of them have been given a mission. Instead of him actually using the abilities in which he had to make um, at least one additional talent of gold, what he did is he made up excuses. And the king was not pleased with the excuses. And so guess what he did with that one that had the one talent of gold? He took it, he gave it to the one that had the five talents of gold, and then he kicked the one that had the servant who had the one talent out. And that is what God, it, it was a parable. And basically what it, what it tells us, boys and girls, this parable, this story, the moral of the story is when God gives us a mission or a task, he gives it to us based upon our ability. And then he expects us to use our abilities and our, and our gifts to go forth and be fruitful. He's not going to put up with excuses. And at the end of the day, there will be judgment that comes upon those who are doing nothing but making excuses. Boys and girls, if you're afraid of um, actually stepping up and stepping out and doing what God has called and purpose for you to do, and that is to share the good news of the gospel and to make disciples by living the gospel wherever you are, then pray to God that he will give you the courage and he will give you the courage through the power of his Holy Spirit 
so that you can go forth and be everything that God has called and purposed for you to be. He has given you a mission and you, he, he helps to make that possible, but you have to lean and depend upon him and stop making excuses. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, I pray that this message has been a blessing to you and that you are going to take this mission that God has blessed you with, and that is to share the gospel and to make disciples by being examples of how to live in God's household so that others may receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and live as God desires for them to live in his household as well. Take that mission. Ask God for help so that you will be a blessing in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May God keep you.